the Miami Hurricanes. And last year was interesting, obviously, because, I mean, they finished second in the Coastal, but they got a new guy coming in. We'll turn it over on the screen here. Miami went 7-5 and five last year. And, of course, now you move to Mario Cristobal. Uh, the way that that coaching change went down just left a bad taste in my mouth. And, obviously, I don't have anything against Miami. It was just, it was so businessy and so, like, leaving Diaz out to dry, right? I, I just, I hated that. Absolutely hated it. But, uh, but regardless, you know, it is what it is. We are now at this situation. Number 21 in returning production this year. They went 7-5 last year. Uh, post-game win expectancy was almost the exact same. 6.98 wins for them when it came to the stats. Uh, their projected SP Plus record is 9-3 and three this year. They are bringing back 81% of their defense. The offense is losing quite a bit. They're bringing back 69% on that. Uh, but roster strength, number nine in the country. Like This is still an incredibly talented unit, uh, and the offense is more talented than the defense when it comes down to it. When you, be, when you factor in recruiting rankings and experience, et cetera, it all goes in there. Let's, let's, talk, about, uh, let's talk about the offense first. Offensive coordinator Josh Gaddis, of course, comes over from Michigan. He burned a couple of bridges on his way out of Ann Arbor. I think we can say that safely. But I'm not sure that we've actually seen what his offense looks like. And I don't know that we will see it this time. right? I don't think Mario Cristobal is just going to give him the offense. Like, Cristobal, I mean, it's going around on Twitter today. He had Justin Herbert and only let him pass on 47% of available snaps. I mean, it's just kind of a waste when you've got a, a quarterback talent like that but you want to play it so close to the vest so that you don't get beat. Is, is Cristobal going to want to continue to play scared and play conservative and don't beat yourself? In doing that, you can end up beating yourself. Like That's, that's what gets a little crazy. If you've got the talent to be able to do it in the quarterback, which he certainly does with Tyler Van Dyke, maybe you got to open it up a little bit. We'll see if that's what Josh Gaddis wants to do, if that's his thing, or if they continue to play it a little bit conservative. Uh, Gaddis, of course, was under Harbaugh at Michigan, and we know what Harbaugh liked to do. He'd run the ball, very pro-style, very conservative kind of stuff. Uh, the quarterback, Tyler Van Dyke, he's, he's turned into a superstar since entering in last year after Derek King hurt his shoulder. Um, I don't know how he's going to gel with Gaddis. Uh, plenty of talent on offense, especially two new skill transfers. Uh, they got guys coming back from injuries. Offensive line looks strong. They weren't great in 2021 for sure. Uh, the rushing success rate last year was number 102. I mean, just not able to get it done as far as that goes. Passing success rate, number 56. I think it would have been higher had Van Dyke been playing the entire season. But regardless, uh, they were number 16 in explosive play rate on offense, and that is pretty good. P.P. Amper drives number 60. It could be better. I would expect it to be better this season. Moving on to the defense, Kevin Steele takes over as the new defense coordinator. He had a knack for creating top 20 units at Auburn under Malzahn up until that last season where Malzahn ended up, and they lost a bunch of guys uh, heading into that season. So they were having to rebuild it. But Malzahn, of course, le not left, but was relieved of his duties. And then, of course, there was all the mess that went on where the Auburn brass was trying to get Kevin Steele the job. Would not surprise me if he gets brought up again when they end up getting rid of uh, Brian Harson. But we'll, I, I digress. Defense brings back 81% production. As I mentioned, uh, safety Bolden is gone. The linebacker McLeod, defensive end Johnson uh, are not going to be there. Uh, still lots of toys for Steele to make work this year because they've got, I mean, it's a bunch of talent there. You got Miami talent. Secondary was number 24 in pass success rate last year, that, but they were number 65 in passing PPA. Uh, the defensive line was bad against the run, uh, at least rushing success rate. But, you know... And they, they were number 20 in stuff rate, so there's promise. Like, they were able to get back there. Maybe they just couldn't tackle. So, we, there's there's things to work with here. Some of these numbers did not make sense when I started looking over it. It was just very interesting. Uh, they're projected favorites in 10 games. They got six toss-ups. Again, that is games that are expected to be decided by one score. Let's look at the keys to the season. Yeah, You got your, your key players here, the left tackles on Nelson, Defensive tackle Leonard Taylor. Uh, I mean, you got a bunch of dudes. You got a bunch of dudes that can really, really make a difference here. Paris Jr., the running back from Ole Miss. You got uh, another transfer in, Knighton. 
tight end Will Mallory. Like there's there's a lot here. Frank Ladson comes in from Clemson. Like this is this is going to be interesting for sure. This collection of talent. Their last three losses last season were by two, three, and three points. Like should they have been a ten win team? Yeah, well, four of their wins were by four points or less too. So this team was basically a question mark all year long. How quickly can Cristobal reorganize this mismanaged program? Uh, he's he's at least got experience doing that, for sure. He's done it everywhere he's been, other than when he was the offensive line coach at Alabama. Uh, basically, this program has not been able to get out of its own way, but it's also been incredibly underfunded as far as the football program is concerned. Uh, defense was number 115 in takeaways per game, and they still won seven games last year. But you you got to be better than that this year. That's one of the keys to the season. Uh, win total is an eight and a half. Uh, juice the same on both sides. You know, to win the conference, they're plus five fifty. I I like them to go nine and three. I've got a loss to North Carolina, loss at Texas A and M, and a loss to Florida State. But that that includes a win at Clemson and a win over Pitt. So maybe you get the win over Florida State and you lose to Clemson, or you get a win over North Carolina and you lose to uh, Pitt or whoever. Right? There's there's certainly losses that you could see on this schedule, but there's also, you know, there's also things that, I mean, you could you could maybe make an argument for this team going like 11-1, and one, right? I doubt it. I don't think that first year that they're going to come in and just light the world on fire. I think they're going to be a good team that is showing improvement over that 7-5 and five from last year. But remember, that 7-5 and five included like seven games that were coin flips. So... Eh, let's maybe pump the brakes just a, a touch on this. I don't think that they're ACC championship yet, but I do trust Cristobal to be able to recruit. I trust him to be able to coach this team. Remember, this guy won Pac-12 titles with Oregon, and and that's after going seven and five with Willie Taggart's bunch. So it's not like he took over an Oregon program that was uh, that was awesome. He just built them up. He recruited well. He's going to do the same thing at Miami. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.